بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيد الخلق أجمعين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيب عايزين شوية محاضرة اليوم تكون في انترأكشن قلنا فلما نارتسبنت ممكن أميوت همسلف ودايركتلي كونتريبيوت We are going to talk about female breast embryology and physiology definitely uh, to know what is abnormal we need first to know what is normal okay so we'll go through how the breast is developed and how this development it appear on imaging okay to normal so we could differentiate it from <laughs> abnormality okay uh, what is a breast or what is a mammary gland? It is a modified epocrine sweat gland. It is exocrine type of the gland because its excretions is passing through uh, a ductal system. It transports through a ductal system unlike the endocrine that directly excreting into the blood. The main role of which is the milk nutrition uh, to the newborn as you know, but it's also uh, having uh, uh, another uh, functions, which is uh, uh, a secondary sex organs that enable physical distinction between males and females. Uh, the breast is located between the superficial, uh, between the layers of the superficial fascia of the anterior chest uh, pectoralis, extending from the second, third ribs up down to the six and seven ribs from the mid-axillary line laterally to the external edge medially, okay? And in general, it has a spherical shapes and it is a size varying with age, menstrual cycles, lactation, and so forth. And if we look here, we can see different size, different shape, and uh, a symmetry of the breast. So there are many variations between women. This, at the end, uh, affected mainly or uh, by the, the amount of the fat in the breast. That is why the obese ladies are ha having a larger breast than the lean ones. However, at the end, all of the breasts having the same features, which is the component or, uh, of the breast composed of the epithelial system of ducts and lobular alveolar secretory part embedded into amazing chimes, fat and fat. So the main component is the parenchymal, which is a functional component, which is the main site of pathology, and the stromal element, which is a supportive component of fat and connective tissue. The parenchymal uh, is forms of a system of branching, branching dots that ended into these bunch of grapes, representing the asini, okay, are uh, enveloped, which represent allopules, okay, this all is calling allopules, representing the factory of the milk productions that transported through these large ducts, which is called lactiferous duct, down uh, to be discharged through the nipple, while the stromal part is as we mentioned the breast component is the majority uh, re, uh, due to the, the fat component which is part of the stroma into which the uh, lobules is being embedded and the other component of the stromal element is this fiber receptor that uh, support the breast or support these uh, lobules by holding the breast extending from the skin anteriorly to the pectoralis posteriorly and definitely is covered from outside by the skin at its center there is a pigmented nipple areolar uh, complex within which is a montgomery tubercles which is a sebaceous specialized type of sebaceous gland surrounding the nipples and all these structures Okay, it is de their development and their function is being mod uh, modulated by the effect of hormones, mainly estrogen and progesterone. Okay, 
uh, the development of the press, which is known as the mammogenesis, it means formation of the mammary gland, which is a complex biological process uh, throughout, occur throughout female lives. And the main phases of this development are about three phases, which the first one is prenatal or embryogenesis and pubertal phase, as well as pregnancy and lactation. We'll go through all these phases. While the breast development at menopause and postmenopause is stopped and further involuted. Why? Why? Any volunteer? Why, why it's uh, the development stop and involute it? Why the process it is like this? Anyone would like to answer? Okay. Because the brain development, as we mentioned, is mediated by hormones. That is why at the menopause, when hormones stop, the development is stopped and then get the hormones mainly is a female sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, uh, prolactin, along with growth hormone and others. Hello? Okay. Uh, we, we are going to start by the first phase, which is the prenatal development or embryogenesis. Okay. Um, during embryogenesis, Okay, especially at the fourth to six weeks of intrauterine life, there is ectodermal thickening, okay, running as the parallel two lines from the axilla to the groin, okay, and this is called as a, 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 mil, a milk lines. Then later, during intrauterine life, this milk line is involuted, resolved, with exception of a small area over vectoral regions, which develop the later uh, breast. It's called a mammary, uh, mammary uh, breast bud. This occurs equally in male and female, and if the involution is incomplete, then can result in accessory breast or accessory uh, nipples. Okay, so during uh, embryogenesis, we have two main process. The first process, you see, is the formation of primary mammary but or mammary ridge, as we mentioned. This is the earliest stage of embryogenesis and uh, largely is uh, hormonal independent no need for hormone to develop this uh, mammary ridge or the ectodermal thickenings which is embedded into the underlying mesenchyme forming the primary mammary but the second one is the rudimentary uh, gland formations which uh, is hormonal dependent being influenced by the placental hormones so here this is the early, the primary mammary butt. We said it's arise, uh, the, the ectodermal thickening lines is being evoluted with exceptions of a small area over the pectoralis uh, regions. Uh, the ectodermal thickening then embedded and penetrating into the underlying mesenchyme, okay, forming this single rod. And this is, we call it the primary mammary but which doesn't need any hormonal uh, influence to to be formed okay then with, with progression of um, growth of the of the of uh, fetus this uh, but start to get branches you see uh, within the dermal layer of the skin and forming what is called the secondary mammary buds this branching usually reach about 15 to 12 solid cord. And if we go back to the breast, we know that the breast is formed about 15 to 20 
lobes. You see? This is the origins of the breast lobes arising from here. And with progressions, these uh, rods, you see, it get canalized and these canalizations joined and open into a depressions here. These depressions is the future side of the nipple. So this is forming the lactiferous, the canalizations is forming the lactiferous duct. So the breast is arising from the skin. The ectodermal part, as you see here, this is the ectodermal portion forming what? Forming the ductal system. The, the, the functional part is formed from the ectoderm. Underlying mesoderm later develop the connective tissue and fat and vessels and so on. And the nipple is arising from the uh, uh, ectoderm. Going for the formation of the nipple more, as we said, within the second and third trimester, a depression into the uh, ectodermal layers for a mammary pit or epithelial pit. This is a site of futures uh, of the nipples, okay? And later mm -hmm. in intrauterine life, the proliferation of the underlying mesenchymes or the cells of the dermal of the skins, okay? Forming, causing pro proliferative changes here or uh, of cellular proliferations, especially smooth muscle and connective tissue, uh, while the fat is far away. Look, the fat are not contributing for the formation of nibble and the areola. And what is the significance of that? This is reflecting for those who are doing ultrasound. While you are doing ultrasound, the nibble usually absorbs the sound uh, and a lot of background shadowing appear. Why? Because it is mainly form of muscles and connective tissue. And the smooth muscles that are responsible for erectile effect of the nipples. So quickly, then followed by the formations of the uh, apocrine glands and montgomery glands and so forth. So uh, the nipple is often depressed and poorly formed during uh, infancy. Not always it is well formed like this uh, uh, during uh, third, third part of trimester and the baby, he should not always be delivered with full form nibble like this, but it can progress, this formation can progress even in postnatal life. And what is the ethelia? Ethelia is failure of development of the nipple from the beginning. No pit, no nipple formations. And this seen with associated with ectodermal dysplasia. Why? Because the nipple is part of the ectoderm. Okay. Press development during infancy and childhood. At birth, we said the baby have underlying, uh, underdeveloped or rudimentary gland, delivered with a rudimentary gland with no difference between boys and girls. So boys and girls, uh, at, uh, uh, when they delivered, having a small amount of breast tissue representing the rudimentary gland, with, it, 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 it varies between, uh, between babies, however, this is, uh, with, will not be present in a preterm uh, infants. Okay. During prenatals and infancy and childhood, generally gonadotrophins and uh, growth hormones levels are low, and that is why there is no generally a secretion uh, activity. However, a, the influx of uh, maternal hormones, estrogens, through the placenta in the fetal circulations, okay, at first, or the lack of the maternal or drop of the maternal hormone by the end of the pregnancy also can stimulate the prolactin secretions by the pituitary of the neonate. This can result in breast enlargement, okay, and what is called a neonatal gynecomastia. And this can be associated 
with a benign, it is a, it is a, it is a proliferation of the glands and can be associated by secretions. You see, it is usually asymptomatic, physiologic, can occur in up to 90% of the term neonates, however, can also be seen in a preterm baby. Occur both in girls and boys, larger and still a little bit persisting girls. Can be unilateral or bilateral and can be associated with a secretion, usually or a milk. That is why they call it white milk. And this is usually uh, disappear by itself without treatment. And these secretions can even be bloody. You see? And usually present in the first week and resolve spontaneously within six months. Okay? Um, uh, but it can take uh, somewhat longer time, is, uh, can uh, persist a little bit longer in some babies, and usually the management is reassurance. Okay? Uh, as we mentioned, this is another case of neonatal uh, gynecomastia, you see, uh, due to glandular breast tissue. And we mentioned that can be associated with milk secretion or blood secretion. But sometimes these are due to uh, mammary ductectasia. You see, not only glandular tissue, but also associated with a ductectasia. Okay, and infections and inflammations can occur, can complicate this uh, neonatal gynecomast, you see, as a cellulitis or even mastitis. The warning is avoid intervention as much as we can. We have to avoid intervention. Otherwise, we will remove mm, the breast tissue and the female baby might end with hypoplasia or lack of breast tissue at all, amasia. Okay. We finished the neonate. What about the infant? Within the first two years of life, this is a critical period of remodeling of the press maturation and involution described by Anagamas et al. Okay, and the infant undergo stimulations, uh, hormonal stimulation and sergiofistradiols by the age of three to four months, and they describe a lot of phases of functional as well as morphological changes during this period both occur both in girls and boys, can be unilateral or bilateral, and a little bit uh, persists longer in a female infant because she has her own uh, steroid hormones related or female related hormones, but by the end of two years, usually this it, it gets quitted okay uh, and normal rudimentary gland retains and it become a dormant till the puberty and here this is a description for morphologic and functional types of changes okay so we expect as we mentioned from uh, birth to six months we have physiological process neonatal gynecomastia and usually resolve by itself. From six months to 18 months of life, the breast can also be prominent, develop as a normal physiological process, transient due to transient activation of hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, both in girl as well as in boys. However, expected a little bit larger in girls and might persist a little bit more in girls and might also associated with some functional follicular cyst but at the end it will resolve by itself okay but if it get progress or does not resolve then we have to think about pathological process uh, it could be precocious puberty or so and then evaluation by endocrinologist it will be needed Okay, let us go for the second phase of the breast development, which is pubertal breast maturation. As we mentioned, the breast 
uh, remodeled within the first two years of life and then get quiescent until the property. It retained to it is underdeveloped rudimentary uh, uh, branching uh, rudimentary tubules, okay, or ducts that seen at best. So again, until puberty, the present will be same uh, in both sexes, girls and boys. Okay. If we look here, this is a simple branched rudimentary ductal system. You see, the baby delivered with this and is equal in both boys and girls until the puberty. However, at puberty, due to testosterone and suppression of so the effect of the of the, ester, uh, of the estrogens, the male breast is not going to further develop, okay, and involute. While in the females, due to stimulations of the uh, female sex hormone, especially the estrogen along with the growth hormones, a lot of changes in the breast of cares and rapid enlargement of the breast is occur mainly due to proliferations of the fat and connective tissue, more of the stromal element, okay? However, also some changes along the uh, parenchymal element or, uh, or, or uh, uh, ductal tissue is also occurs. And as we mentioned, it was just a simple branch that uh, is then start complex branching morphology, morphogenesis and somewhat formations of terminal duct lobular unit start to occur at puberty at, from the peripheral going to inside of the breast. Okay, what is the adenosis? Any volunteer? Anyone can unmute himself and answer. All of the press reporting, okay, you will find adenosis, represent the findings going with adenosis. This is adenosis. On mammography, adenosis. In press ultrasound, adenosis. So what is adenosis? We have to know, this is very common. Very common, adenosis, adenosis, every report contain adenosis. Any volunteer, what is adenosis? Uh huh. Okay. Adenosis is benign proliferation or benign proliferative process mainly affect the lobular or acinar component of the parenchyma. And as just we finish here, we said during pubertal breast, terminal duct lobular unit or SNI start to develop. So this is part of adenosis. Huh? So physiological adenosis start at the pubertal period. During pubertal period, lobular differentiation or terminal duct lobular unit start to develop first at the peripheral region of the breast and extend centrally. Okay, what is the clinical significance? No one who would like to contribute to participate and answer these questions? Huh? Any volunteer? What is the clinical significance of that? There is image here. What does this image reflect? This is my, uh, this is our patient. What do you expect this patient presented with? And what do you expect the age of this uh, patient? Mm -hmm. The clinical significance of this uh, physiological effect. This lady uh, she's young and this is a yamaha very 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 common very common uh, at teenage and early 20s the ladies alaikum uh, salam i think uh, it's the clinical significance uh, when the patient uh, at uh, the 
puberty age uh, 10 or uh, 11 before growth of breast uh, come to uh, breast clinic with the swelling uh, and uh, her parents uh, very suspicious is this mass or uh, is this a pathology uh, but uh, on ultrasound it seemed to be not a pathology it is an adenosis and it is a physiological process don't, and don't need intervention okay thank you okay uh, yes uh, this is part of the answer uh, this is uh, we are talking about after after development after development of the breast you are right 100 percent correct uh, this is regarding the breast butt the breast butt is usually we is it is when we go to talk about the breast butt it is similar to a mass but regarding this is almost fully mature uh breast tissue develop huh? but but usually at this age patient presented to us in radiology department okay complaining of swelling in the upper outer breast swelling and tenderness when you do when we go through the normal uh, breast uh, tissue you will see this is a little bit different this is a ground glass if it's less ground glass feature less it is diffusely high book if you look here this is a little bit different from the, the one in the left this is more glandular than this side than the left so this is more it was more painful uh, and more tender and this is just what we call it a physiological adenosis this is just for reassurance it is a virat too it is virat too it is just a physiological adenosis due to proliferation of the normal gland the normal gland start to proliferate from the upper outer breast going centrally what is else what is the significance for that another significance for that what else the clinical significance of this Excellent, excellent, well done. Yes, the clinical significance of that, the maximum, the maximum incidence of the breast cancer were the maximum amount of the glandular tissue in the upper outer breast. Almost half of the breast, of the breast cancer occurred in the upper outer quadrant well done okay so during pubertal uh, period hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis okay uh, hormones stimulate the development of the breast lobule as well as intralobular stromal connective tissue uh, associated with enlargement of the areola and the nipple result in what is called cell arc so what is a cell arc cell arc is rapid growth of the breast at the onset of the of puberty is essentially under the influence of genetic and endocrine control so characterized by the presence of breast but what is uh, we, uh, corresponding to tenor stage 2, we'll see later what is tenor, and is usually the first clinically recognizable stage of puberty. It has its clinical significance. It is a usually first stage before the development of the pubic hairs. The first secondary sexual characteristic to develop usually between the age of 10 and 12, and the range of age is between eight and a half to 13 and a half. So up to age of 14, if no breast is developed, then investigation, it has to be started. What is transient thylark? If it occur two years earlier than the time of thylark, and usually it's transient, it gets quiescent and then restart at the, age, at the appropriate age. And these, as we mentioned, Yes, it is due to 
immediate stimulus, uh, the immediate stimulus of the mammary gland is related to uh, the pituitary, the, the actions of estrogens and pituitary, uh, the action of estrogens. However, the pituitary growth hormones is also playing an important role along with other uh, factors like insulin, like growth hormone and these changes. Okay, what is tenor staging? What is the tenor staging? Any volunteer? Okay. Tenor, tenor staging is a clinical staging. Uh, describe five stage or five st uh, stage scales described by Tenor B, 1969. And starting from the prepubertal to fully mature adult uh, breast. And this, uh, there are variations in this development, okay, uh, influenced by many factors, pubertal maturation, affinity hormonal concentration, and so on, as seen here, you see, and they correlate with characteristic histological as well as the characteristic ultrasound appearance depending on the amount of the glandular uh, glandular tissue as well as the stroma starting from the prepubertal stromal with lack of uh, glandular tissue to the fully mature breast will go throughout each stage one by one. Starting by tenor stage one, okay? Look for tenor, as we mentioned, tenor stage one is a prepubertal stage. And we said that the breast, the baby, uh, pair, uh, when the uh, pairs, the baby have a rudimentary gland, okay? Without, it is only a primitive gland of ductal, of simple ductal system without uh, terminal ductal lobular unit. So there is no epithelial tissue. And this is only uh, a rudimentary one. It's uh, appear as ill-defined hyperechoic stromal tissue like the male fibroglandular tissue, okay, male of the male breast in the retroareolar region, okay, same as here. And when we can see, rarely we can see a hypochoic nodule, but it should be less than uh, five millimeters. And clinically at this stage, there is uh, no breast tissue, only the papilla or the nibble is being elevated. Okay, what about the tenor stage here? It's obviously look as hyper echoic tissue behind the nipple. So this is tenor stage one in a seven year girl. Okay, what about the tenor stage two? The tenor stage two, there, clinically, there is a ball bubble, but breast bug behind the nipple with the babella or the nipple elevations, okay? But there is no elevations of the uh, areola. And on ultrasound, we can see here what? Hypo ill-defined satellite light or star-shaped hypochoic tissue hmm? branching from behind the nipple surrounded by minimal hyperechoic area. Or or we can see a hyperechoic nodule with larger central star-like hypoechogenicity. This is tenor stage two. So tenor stage three, okay, then there is enlargement in both in the breasts with elevation of the whole breast clinically, as followed by enlargement of the retroareolar, both high central hyper, uh, hypoechoic star-like shape, as well as the peripheral echogenic uh, parenchyma. So what about this? This is tenor one, two, or three. Any volunteer? Two. Can you hear me? This is tenor. Two. Excellent. Excellent. This is tenor. Two. 
Yes, yes. This is tenor two, okay? And here it is tenor two. And this? Three. Huh? Three. three. This is three because the tissue is extending more far from the nibble uh, behind the retroareolar region. This is tenor three, seen in a 13 year old girl. Okay, so tenor stage four, we have lack of the rounded appearance. If you look for, for tenor two and tenor three, it look like a rounded area of hypo and hyper surrounded hyper ecogenicity. Now at tenor four, the hyper ecogenicity getting more prominent, more diffuse, lacking the rounded appearance, as, but still the hypo ecogenic central region is present. While clinically, the areola is a little bit what elevated on top of the elevations of the breast tissue, forming what is called a secondary mound. And this is very important during the development of the breast. And any failure of this state can result in abnormal appearance. So, stage five, tenor. Now, no more the satellite or star-like hypoecogenic region behind the nipple is no more seen. Now we can see the diffuse hmm, hyper ecogenic area with tiny central ecogenic uh, hypochoic oci. Okay, this and might be associated with increased subcutaneous adipose tissue. And as we mentioned, there is lack of rounded appearance, nodular appearance, and central star-like hypochoic area seen in tenor two. Uh, to uh, to four. Okay, what about tenor here? This is tenor stage. Five. Excellent. This is five. This is tenor stage five. Diffuse ecogenic with centralist with uh, intervening tiny hypoechoic foci. And this one. Three. Yes, I accept it. It is four. It is larger than three. Uh, it is four, but it is accepted. If you said three or four, it is acceptable. And this one? This should be clear. Five. This is five. five. This is five. This five. is the mature. This is the adult type of the breast. Diffuse, hyperechoic, okay? With intervening, intervening tiny, uh, small hyperechoic, and development of the subcutaneous layer. So this is... This is four? Five. Okay. Five. How come? Who said five? And what about this one? Five. Four? Four, five. Number five. Number five is five. five. And ten here. One. Oh, ten one. Ten this one. is one. Ten ten one. This is ill-defined. Yes. Hyperechoic, small hyperechoic tissue behind the nipple. So, yes. Uh, four, three, two, one, and five. Okay? Okay, in a summary, we can revise this is again. Okay, A, tenor stage one, clinical elevation of the papilla only. Ultrasound, hmm, small ecogenic tissue in the superiolar region. Okay, tenor two, clinically elevation of breast and elevation of the breast and papilla with slightly larger diameter of the areola. Ultrasound, hypoechoic subareolar tissue with minimal peripheral hyperechoic, just behind the nipple. And as we mentioned, this corresponding to the cell arc. State two, we said tenor state two is corresponding to the cell arc type. State three, uh, clinically, there is Increase in size, okay, subareolar nodule, further enlarged, and the areola is also widened, but there is no separations. The areola and the breast are one unit. Ultrasound, increase in satellite, as well as the 
hyper eco surrounding hyper ecogenicity extending beyond and extending far from the retro areolar region for uh, there is what elevations of the elevation of the areola forming secondary mound we have the mound of the breast and another mound of the areola we have two mounds here and this is very important we'll see later the significance of that okay there are two it is being separable it's separable from the uh, the mound of the breast and there is diffuse hyper ecogenicity okay with central hypo ecogenic now it is diffuse okay it's not a nodular like in three look for the three little bit nodular now it's becoming more diffuse a larger amount of hyper ecogenicity but it's still presence of the hypo ecogenic central region this is a difference between three and fifth okay fifth uh, ten or five now uh, the babilla uh, uh, is uh, there is recessions of the areola to the contour or smoothening with the contour of the breast look here the babilla is elevated forming another uh, another mount, uh, uh, elevations while here again it recesses and the same contour of the breast and the areola uh, as a one as one unit so okay this is very important and the ultrasound as we mentioned there is lack of this high central hypoechoic uh, satellite structures and now multiple tiny tiny hypoechoic scattered intervening or intermixed with diffuse hyper ecogenic glandular and stromal and this is what we call fibroglandular parenchyma as well as the development of the subcutaneous fat. Now you understand the tenor, huh? Okay. So we, we went through the development of the breast from uh, prenatal up to the uh, pubertal stage and reaching the adult type. So you expect to have normal variations as well as deviation from the normal as congenital anomalies. And we'll not go through all of these, we'll leave it for a separate lectures, just we'll mention few of which. And this is one of the uh, anomalous, you see, as we mentioned before, if there is no complete resolutions or incomplete resolutions of the mammary ridge or mammary crest, it might result in multiple or supernumerary crest or supernumerary navels and uh, supernumerary or more uh, breast tissue, we call it polymastia, and more nipple tissue, we call uh, presence of nipples, we call it polythelia, a little bit more than polymastia, however, both are rare. And interestingly, this can be seen both in uh, male and female, because the original development is the same. And here, this is the pictures of 14-year-old Gail having tenor 4. You see, this is a tenor 4 breast tissue uh, in a panoramic view, and below which you can see the accessory breast. However, this accessory breast or the embryological vestige is common uh, seen in the axilla and the axillary tail of a sphinx, and the breast the axillary breast, as you know, commonly we, we, we saw patients in the clinics with, the, with this type of uh, accessory uh, breast tissue and following the regular breast in textures and in disease process. Here, this is fatty regular breast, fatty, fatty axillary breast. Uh, parenchymal, both are parenchymal, the regular as well as the axillary, and it can be seen in both breast or in uh, one breast, and this is the ultrasound picture. Uh, this is a 12-year-old lady with a bulbable lump in her axilla, and it was just an accessory uh, axillary breast. And as we mentioned that, any disease or abnormal process occur in the regular breast can occur in the axillary breast from a circumscribed lesion like a fibroadenoma, 
to um, floyd this tumor here in this example to infiltrating malignant mass here to suspicious uh, malignant calcifications infiltrating lesions with intra lesions uh, infiltrating uh, parenchymal lesions here on ultrasound with intra lesions uh, vascular uh, echo signals okay and this is a bulbable nodule okay nodular like or mass like lesion in the axilla it was just ectopic breast tissue presenting like a mass okay another uh, developmental abnormality or variance is asymmetric early thelark and we mentioned that the thelark can occur uh, early before the time the expected uh, age and usually when it occurs uh, it will be asymmetric adding these examples on the left side it is tenor 2 while in the right side it is tenor 3 stage and a uh, premature thelark this is what you have mentioned before you said the clinical significance of of, of, of this the early ripening of the breast but in a six year old girl so what is the clinical significance for this usually it is asymmetric if you look here the other breast is almost tenor one you see it is tenor one while this tenor three when the, uh, the baby presented or the child presented with this type and you put your probe and you will find some activities and intravascular, it might be erroneously diagnosed as a lesion or a chest mass and they might surgically remove and it occurs. And the girl uh, ended with lack or asymmetry uh, in breast tissue, lack of one breast. And this is our patients. We have done for her MRI, uh, looking for the severe asymmetry between the two breasts. We could appreciate some breast tissue and well-developed nipple areolar complex. So the diagnosis here is a hypoplasia, underdevelopment of the breast, which is congenital. And we look for the pectoralis. It was not absence here. It was just an isolated hypoplasia. We have to, uh, to differentiate it from amastia, which is associated with lack of both congen care congenitally with lack of breast tissue as well as nipples. Okay, and can be associated also with with pectoralis, with loss of pectoralis, and with other defect like ectodermal uh, dysplasia and so on. While we talk about the, the iatrogenic type of uh, lack of breast tissue and usually is associated with only lack of the breast while the nipple areolar complex it will not usually be affected okay and this is uh, commonly associated with um, uh, iatrogenic surgery or irradiations okay and we call it amastia and, the, uh, and as you know that uh, why during the period of uh, breast development between 10 and 30 year old, uh, if there's of those they being exposed for irradiations, they will consider as uh, a high risk group because the breast at this time is highly radio sensitive, might not develop or might develop breast cancers. Okay. Regarding the nipples, also uh, we mentioned it at the uh, examples, as we mentioned before, the development of the nipples as the mama repeat, then everted. Sometimes this eversion might fail and result in a nipple retractions or non everted or in inverted, uh, in, uh, inverted, inverted nipples. Okay, but sometimes up to the puberty can be normally inverted nipple, then later after she starts uh, lactations or after pregnancy and lactations might uh, get, get uh, developed and uh, the nipple inverted. So nipple can be failed to get inverted, can be absent or uh, the, can be uh, 
pathologically retracted, okay? And uh, when, when the nipple, the difference in the terminology between retraction and inversion, if the retraction, when there is a slit-like, a slit-like pull the nipple like this, uh, we call it uh, a retraction. While the whole nipple is going to inside, we call it as an inversion, and this retraction can occur as asymmetric by this uh, paradactal mastitis in this case. And what about these pictures? Any volunteer, anybody knows this? What is this uh, 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 mammogram represent? Uh huh. This is developmental anomaly. Huh? Do you know? Anyone know this image? If you look here, this is a breast tissue, attenuated breast tissue, but not only a small amount of breast tissue. The breast tissue is seen herniated into nipple areolar complex. Why? Due to interruptions of the stage of secondary mount. Do you remember the secondary mount is stage four? Tannery stage four, we said that, يعني, then the, 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 the areola elevated, making a secondary mount, then uh, recess again, and become uh, uh, having the smooth contour along with the breast. And this is very important, okay, in the development of the breast. If there is failure of this stage, okay, might result in, the, in a defect and the whole breast might herniate it throughout and get, okay, uh, you know, hindered from development of good amount of the breast and they call it a tuberous breast, okay? Reduce amount of the parenchymal volume because it's already uh, uh, is staying at small space. Okay, so uh, we notice here a mammogram. Mammogram is contraindicated in children and young women less than 30. Why? Why mammogram is, is, is contraindicated at this age? The breast is very dense and a mass can be easily missed. Your, your voice is not clear, huh? The breast is um, very dense, um, D, and a mass can be easily missed. Excellent, well done. What else? Excellent, huh? Uh, in children, it is radio sensitive as well. Excellent, uh, well done. Yes, huh? Okay, you are right. So, the breast is extremely, uh, this egg group is extremely low risk for breast cancer. So no need to irradiate the, those uh, group looking for breast cancer. As well, there is extreme risk of irradiating, uh, of radiation induced malignant changes in this young glandular tissue, radiosensitive tissue as well as poor image quality due to extremely dense fibroglandular uh, breast. So the modality of choice is ultrasound. Ultrasound yeah. is ideal imaging modality to study this group and can be useful in identifying and characterizing the abnormality and guiding for further investigations. So it is really important huh, to have knowledge about the appearance of normal breast development so as, okay, to differentiate it huh, uh, from a specific pathology and specific lesions and uh, breast pathology. Okay, and why breast uh, biopsy and surgery should be avoided in children? We mentioned that. We have mentioned it. We have just mentioned. We yeah. have to. Why? The, the breast 
will not develop. The breast will not. They will end with. Um, yeah, to avoid risk of deformity and proper development of the breast. Okay, we finish the second stage uh, of the, and just we we just we would like to talk about the dynamic effect of, of the menstrual cycles into the breast and the cyclical variations of ovarian hormones. The fluctuation of the hormones result in some changes in the breast tissue and uh, with variation in size and texture of the breast. However, no more, yani some alveoli uh, are, are developed, but not the, the mature one uh, which will occur during pregnancy. Same as those alveoli, okay, occur during the pubertal period, it will be let down throughout ministerial cycles and result in some variations and the congestions of the of the breast tissue and the significance of that is is what why why we we mentioned this what is the clinic what is the clinical significance of the ministerial cycle and physiology of these changes I in the fibrocystic disease of the breast okay uh -huh. What is the impact of this on, on the breast imaging? The impact? Yes. Uh, Imam, Imam uh -huh. should not be done during the menstrual cycle, just after, yani, it should be scheduled after the end of uh, the menstrual cycle. Excellent, excellent, well done. Uh, so we have two, we have, we have secretory and we have follicular phase. During the secretory phase, Okay, this is the time, the maximum engorgement of the breast. The breast, it will be enlarged, will be nodular and tender with cyclic pain. And the mammogram at this time will be painful and will be dense due to retention of water and engorgement increase the density of the mammogram. And this is not the appropriate time to do a mammography. And also not appropriate time to do an MRI because the background enhancement, parenchymal enhancement, it will be the maximum and it will obscure and misinterpret the image and so also these changes will be, as you mentioned, will be severe in women with premenstrual syndrome as well as in those who have a fibrocystic changes. After period, immediately these uh, changes will go down and during the follicular phase, the breast is less nodular, mammogram less tender uh, and less dense. And this important time to select uh, for, for mammography performance or performing mammography, as well as the MRI, it should be uh, the optimum time to do the MRI is usually during the, this period and second week in particular and it's because it will give us the optimum result due to least physiological enhancement. Okay, if you look here, this type of the breast, okay, uh, obscuring these large cystic changes seen on the uh, ultrasound. So, those, those uh, patients with persistent changes, having a dense breast, uh, we should not uh, do for them a mammography during the secretory phase. And also, if you look for this, uh, this is a patient's, this patient's, okay, same patient uh, during MRI done at fourth week at the secretary, uh, secretary phase of her cycles. Look for the uh, MRI, you will tell that she has multiple enhancing lesions. While this is only a extensive, but normal background parenchymal enhancement. When they repeat her MRI during the optimum time, which was the second week, look for the breast now, there is no any background 
parenchymal enhancement. So understanding of the breast, uh, physiology is really important and its impact on uh, appropriate breast imaging. Okay, <clears throat> we finish the prenatal development as well as pubertal uh, breast development. Now we'll go for the, the third most important phase of uh, breast development, which is pregnancy and lactations. We mentioned before, uh, rudimentary, since birth up to the puberty, then during puberty, start to uh, branching uh, and formation of minimal uh, uh, tubular, sorry, tubular uh, terminal duct lobular units, okay, or, uh, morph or morphogenesis, and then during uh, pregnancy, there are side branchings and well formations of the terminal duct lobular unit. Look here how the alveologenesis and terminal duct lobular units, how it is heavily formed during pregnancy and lactations. So the mature form, the full form of the parenchymal and epithelial of the breast tissue is formed during pregnancy and lactations. See? The secretory alveoli, they increase in the parenchymal growth. We said during, we said during uh, puberty, the increase enlargement of the breast is predominantly stromal, while the, the parenchymal changes, the epithelial changes, is, 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 uh, is not the dominant. The dominant is stromal. With some change in the epithelial, epithelial changes. While during pregnancy and lactations, the enlargement of the breast is predominantly due to the glandular, the parenchymal growth, okay? And development of more and let down of more alveoli, more SNI, more terminal duct lobular unit, that to secrete milk, more secretory alveoli. And then after lactation, it will go back and just, okay, uh, uh, involuted, but it will never re go back to the pre uh, stage. Okay, so following the uh, progression of, of uh, pregnancy from first, second, uh, third trimester, the breast also is uh, growing as we mentioned here, and these changes will occur uh, we have mentioned the alveologenesis and many other changes occur during, during pregnancy and we should be aware about this because it will be reflected in our imaging. And while you are doing uh, press imaging, okay, you might, sometimes the, the lady might not know that she's pregnant. You might ask her by the changes you have noticed in the press, are you pregnant? Sometimes she might be in her second uh, trimester, but she don't know. She has an uh, irregular period or for any reason, she don't know that she has pregnant. Okay, and you can, you can notice the, the, the uh, ultrasound changes and these changes on your, uh, on your images. And the, the, by, the, by the end of the second, of the first trimester, the lobular alveolar maturation, it will be complete. You see? So, the breast, it will be glandular. It will reflect on ultrasound. The adenosis will be obvious on ultrasounds. And by the second trimester, the milk will be developed. So you will just start to find the tectasia full of milks. And the nipple areolar start also to, to be changed. And sometimes the changes of the pregnancy start even earlier before the pregnancy test is positive and so forth. And this, in the third trimester, the lady start to have some secretions, what is called cholesterol. Also, we have to be aware about this. If the ladies tell you she has nipple discharge, okay, you, uh, if we, you, you are aware about it, you will not search for any radiological abnormality looking for the cause of this discharge, and you understand this is only a physiological uh, discharge due to a pregnancy. 
and uh, during lactations, all these changes occurring during pregnancy, it will uh, proceed uh, much, much more than during pregnancy, okay? And the press will be much more engorged, which make it a media for uh, inflammation and abscess formation. And here it will be the challenges. Okay, so as we mentioned, due to pregnancy uh, hormones stimulating uh, the breast and result in, it can result in bulbable nodularity and lumpiness, you see, which all these are being challenging while you're scanning the patients. She will, she might, just this can be a, just a physiological lumpiness and nodularity due to the effect of hormones. And we have to differentiate it from uh, a real, a real disease uh, process, a real new lesions, a real uh, evolving, especially evolving cancer in this uh, lady, a pregnancy associated cancers. And sometimes the lady might experience some tenderness and soreness of the nipples, which is also difficult uh, to differentiate it from budgets or these types of the diseases and increase the breast volume and water content it has impact, same as during the menstrual cycle, but here it is much, much more, and the increaseness, uh, increase the firmness, uh, okay, with 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 um, with progression of the pregnancy and the increased vascularity. All these will result in increased breast density, okay, and it uh, uh, and it will be clinically as well as radiological diagnostic challenges. And we have to have full understanding about all these physiological changes so as we could be uh, aware about it and to differentiate it uh, to, from uh, press pathology. And malignancy during this period, it will be really difficult to be diagnosed. And as you know, at this period, mammography poses uh, radiation risk for the developing fetus, okay? And we are not usually performing unless there is really, uh, uh, you know, just uh, really indications for that. We can do it with some precautions. And the MRI, as we mentioned, because of the increased background, uh, physiological background uh, parenchymal enhancement, it will not be an appropriate uh, imaging modality and ultrasound is a method of choice to evaluate this uh, group of patients. However, it still with, uh, represent a great challenge. Why? Because various physiological changes we mentioned, uh, the breast it become diffusely hypochoic, become highly vascular, and the uh, uh, ducts become engorgeous milk, and all these changes it sometimes might simulate presence of a disease or might make the disease being difficult, existing disease being difficult to be diagnosed and some benign process. However, uh, the breast, what is occur in the, uh, in the breast during, during pregnancy mostly are a benign process like lactation adenoma and galactosils and the breast, Malignancy is not much common during these periods, but some benign process like inflammation, trauma, and these are really difficult, difficult to be differentiated from malignancy is during this period and might yeah, and just uh, being concomitant, uh, concomitantly be present. Look for, 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 for this uh, image. You see, this is physiological adenosis. Typical diffuse, uh, there is lack of the uh, heterogeneity of the intervening hyperechogenic with a small tiny foci of the mature normal breast uh, tissue. Now it's being diffusely and there is lack of the breast uh, or the lack of the fatty tissue and fibrous tissue. And this is only a glandular, diffuse glandular tissue. This is again physiological adenosis similar to that we have seen in that young girl 
during pubertal and after pubertal stage and compare it with this lady presented with a bowel bubble swelling due to a pathologically confirmed uh, adenosis also. But this is a pathological type of adenosis. And we have different, different uh, types of adenosis. It can sometimes simulate uh, malignancy. I'll talk about this in the pathological uh, lectures of uh, later on, inshallah. Okay, uh, this is ultrasound, okay, of a pregnant lady. Look how the ground glass uh, diffusely hypochoic. When uh, during lactations, this become bright. Why it become echogenic, bright? Due to the presence of engorgement by milk and the milk contain fat that it's being reflected to increase echogenicity of the breast and these the ducts contain engorge with milk during lactations and look for the vascularity but the image is not colored is black and white and how the vessels are getting large and really really during these periods you see uh, especially during pregnancy uh, evaluations for 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 mastitis and unless developing an abscess well-defined abscess early mastitis purpural mastitis is really challenging as well as the fat necrosis and changes okay breast changes during pregnancy these are examples look this is uh, same these are three examples for the same lady, uh, Brie. Uh, this is non-pregnant non and this is while pregnancy and lactations. Look for the breast and even, even they are bumping, they bump the milk. When they bump bumping the milk before mammogram, they will reduce uh, the, the, the increased density. But however, look how the breast is di different in the fibroglandular parenchyma, you see how the breast is extremely dense uh, after after pregnancy and lactation. Same for this and same for this. Look, this is almost a scatter fibroglandular and this is extremely fatty, extremely dense breast after lactations and uh, pregnancy and lactations. And look for the background uh, background enhancement, parenchymal enhancement in a lactating woman and this is uh, after lactation after she stopped six months after she stopped lactations look how it differs here you might say this is a pathological uh, enhancement even because especially because uh, it is asymmetric between the two breasts and this asymmetry what do you think why 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 the ladies the lactating ladies sometimes they having uh, breast asymmetry. One breast is more uh, larger than the other one. What do you think the cause for that? Maybe they use uh, for feeding the baby one breast more than the other. Excellent. Well done. This is the major cause. Okay. They are using one breast more than the others. Okay. And we'll see uh, the, the effect of that later, inshallah, during evolutions. Look for this also how extremely dense breast and it is useless this is a lactating lady uh, we can see nothing here in this type of the breast and look for the ultrasound the engorgement of the uh, of the ducts with milk and a galacto multiple galacto seals even retrospectively it's difficult to appreciate these types of lesions so no need to expose these these ladies with mammography and during lactations and uh, pregnancy also benign breast lesions present in the breast can be affected as the glandular breast itself um, and these are examples of fibroadenoma fibroadenoma is being affected fibroadenoma is uh, is uh, like it's almost like a, a small breast except for a lacking a fat. When containing a fat, we'll say fibroadenoliboma, not fibroadenoma, okay? But it is fibroadenoma, a composed of both fibrous as well as, and it is, it is a lobular lesions. 
You see, it contains all the tissues, almost all the tissues of, of the glandular press. So any changes can occur in the press, can, can occur within uh, fibroadenoma or fibroadenolipomas. See? And here, this is gestational fibroadenoma with proliferative changes. These proliferative changes, look for these cystic changes on ductectasia, occur, stimulating what we call it a complex fibroadenoma. And this fibroadenoma, okay, how, look how it become irregular, hypochoic due to infarctions by the effects of the hormones. And here there is sclerosing hyperplasia. There is, sorry, there is secretory hyperplasia occurring in a fibroadenoma as well as infarctions. You see the radiological appearance getting more suspicious. Okay, uh, cancer during lactation really challenging and difficult. And this is definitely lucky, luckily that to be visualized at extreme uh, outer, extreme uh, uh, away uh, from the rest of the parenchyma, at the periphery of the parenchyma, at the fat glandular interface. Otherwise, this is speculating mass, it will not be seen. It looks like same as this nodular, nodular parenchyma. So the re really cancer to be diagnosed at this period is really challenging. As we mentioned, the, during pregnancy, the breast is getting large due to a lot of parenchymal development, and then uh, this it will be uh, involuted post lactations, and the breast is start to regress and becoming small. However, it will not retain as before the pubertal stage and might result in asymmetry if the lady using one breast more than the other. And in this case, usually, if the lady, yani just she has, she's going to, uh, to, to get uh, pregnant again and to lactate, we will advise her just to use the smaller breast much more than the, the, the big one, so as just to compensate. Okay, we finish uh, all these, uh, the above, uh, the three main stages, uh, in virugenesis, uh, maturation during pubertal, and the development, well, full development of the breast during pregnancy and lactations. And as we mentioned, during menopause, the development will be stopped and further involution as we have seen here uh, this is the maximum alveologenesis occurred during uh, then during pregnancy and lactations and then it will fall down and we will involute and this the impact of that we'll see it in on imaging uh, this is occurred definitely due to withdrawal of ovarian estrogen uh, is in the glandular tissue associated with cross bonding, uh, increase in the fat compo composition of the breast, and the intervening receptor just um, will increase with the development of cyst formations. Okay, uh, if the patients after menopause start to uh, to use a hormonal replacement therapy again the cycle will return back, more glandular tissue will develop, and uh, as we mentioned this, will be, will, uh, the mammogram will be uh, fatty pressed, and this is the most sensitive type of mammography. Sorry, and when she use uh, hormonal replacement therapy, again, more glandular tissue will develop and increase uh, mammographic density will appear, and the patient might develop breast tenderness and all these ch physiological changes occur uh, due to adenosis. So, uh, examples of uh, breast for the same lady when she was at her 30 year old, look her breast, how extremely dense. And her breast is being involuted, okay, when she is 55 postmenopausals. But look, because 
her breast at the beginning was much, much having a lot of glands that it's being voluted from extremely dense to heterogeneously dense parenchyma. Still, she has a dense parenchyma for a postmenopausal woman. So, the involution change occur in the breast throughout life. The, if, uh, the effect, the appearance of pattern uh, of the breast parenchyma evolution, the hallmark in breast imaging by the remodeling process that caused glandular tissue being slowly replaced by the fatty tissue. And this account for differences in size, shape, and architectural architecture of the breast. Okay. These examples of a lady uh, taking uh, a hormonal replacement therapy, lying before she starts treatment, and when she starts hormonal replacement therapy, look, by th this is after one year, another year, and a third year, during three years, look for the breast, how it's getting, going more denser and more nodular, you see? And hopefully, the ultrasound made these nodules just as multiple breast cysts. Another example here, this lady, before starting hormonal therapy treatment, after starting hormonal treatment, she developed what? What we call it this? Mm -hmm. We call it what? She developed something here. Well, she developed obesity or density on interval. It's called a developing density. Developing asymmetry. Mm -hmm. This is uh, developing asymmetry. Okay, and when she stopped, when she stopped the hormonal treatment for only two weeks, look how this asymmetry regressing back to the baseline mammogram. So, is uh, the effect of hormonal treatment? We have to be aware about that. If we have seen a postmenopausal woman with a dense breast, we have to ask the lady if she's on hormonal replacement therapy or not, and we have to compare with uh, basal uh, uh, mammogram. Okay. The reverse for the hormonal replacement therapy is hormonal therapy agonisting the estrogen for the breast cancer. If the patient is receiving tamoxifene, okay, it will its effect is agonist, uh, the effect of, of estrogen. So it will give the reverse. And instead of having dense breast, the breast, it will be less dense. This is a baseline. After she received a tamoxifene in four years, look, breast is getting less denser, from extremely dense to heterogeneously dense. And the reduction in mammographic density, it is a predictor for, for what? Uh, effect of therapy. If, excellent, for the therapy effect. So, uh, the, the, if gram is getting, uh, having lower, uh, decreasing, decreasing density of mammogram, you see, it's associated with 65 lower risk of cancer recurrence compared with those who have no decrease in size. Again, on MRI, it has effect on background parenchymal enhancement. This is baseline and this is receiving. What is the significance for that? It will help us uh, to follow the patient receiving hormonal therapy for breast cancer. So any abnormal enhancement, we don't expect to have background parenchymal enhancement. So any enhancement, we have to take it cautiously, okay? And to consider it and to follow it, to work it, to exclude recurrence. And if they stop treatment, they might develop a rebound background parenchymal enhancement. So we have to be aware about this effect and its physiology uh, on uh, an impact on the breast imaging. So, 
as we said, during menopause, the breast is getting fatty. And fatty breast, it will appear on mammogram as black. Also, on ultrasound is black. So it's high bone ultrasound and high budens on mammogram, both. You see, is high bone. This is almost completely involuted breast. While the premenopausal having uh, fibroglandular parenchyma, this is a normal mature fibroglandular green described earlier. You see, echogenic with multiple small ovals, hypoechoic scattered through, intermixed with, and it account for amount of the press density of mammography. The press, it will be dense. If it is homogeneously distributed, it will be seen as one disc, or can be seen as multiple discs, or can be seen as heterogeneous with intervening uh, fat. But at the end, it will reflect the mammographic density. And in general, this is usually, uh, generally, the fatty press seen postmenopausal and this seen uh, premenopausal due to, to, to the presence of and involutions, the physiology we described earlier. And, but at the end, uh, not always in postmenopausal, we might find some ladies having uh, a dense breast. And premenopausal, fatty ladies might have no much glandular tissue, and her breast might be uh, uh, might be fatty. But presence of fat make mammogram highly sensitive, and the most sensitive and easy, very easy, to visualize size of uh, breast cancer. As seen here in the background, in contrast to the fatty breast, the uh, tumors is very clearly visualized. Unlike this extremely dense breast, we are looking here, there is some area of distortions. Very difficult to visualize the cancer. But this is the reverse for ultrasound. When the breast is fatty, unlike mammography, ultrasound fatty breast is difficult to uh, pick, uh, uh, pick breast cancer in these because all the layers, the subcutaneous fatty layers and retromammary fatty layers are same as the uh, mammary layers which is also become fatty. So it will become difficult to differentiate it and differentiate it from the cancer ad in this case. Look for these uh, lesions. You see, this is our patients. Look, well appreciated on CT. The same in retrospective, this is not much different from and might easily be missed from the adjacent uh, parenchyma, uh, adjacent fatty parenchyma. Okay. This is a nine-year-old neonate with increasing right breast tender lump. What is your diagnosis? Nine year months, nine months neonate with increasing right breast tender lump. So any volunteer? Look for the age for wording increasing. It, is it normal or abnormal? No volunteer? It is normal. It's just due to the effect of the maternal hormones. Maternal hormone at nine months, we said, the maternal hormones result in physiological gynecomastia. Uh, early weeks, started early weeks, and should be resolved by six months. This is a neonatal and effect of hormones of, of maternal hormone. It should be resolved by six months. 
So this is nine months increasing tender lump. This is the second, the second period. We talk about the second period, the second two years, the, 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 from six months to two years or to 18 months. We talk about this period. We said also, yes, there is, there is at this time, uh, there is physiological changes and enlargement. However, it should not be progressing. It should be, see, it is yani, early and then it has to be getting softer and regressing. Since it is increasing, if there is associated with other secondary signs, sexual signs, or if we have done pelvic ultrasound and we have seen ovarian or uterine abnormality or female pelvic changes, then we will consider it as precocious puberty. If it is these changes are not there, we will say this is a benign premature thylark and it might regress by itself. Okay? If it regress, if it regress, it's okay. If it is still progressing after two years, then in the crinologist should interfere. Okay, and further workup should be done. Okay, and what about this? Uh, any volunteer? Three days, three days old boy. We have example like this. Adenosis. This is three days, three days boy with lump in anterior chest bilaterally. We have no adenosis at this age. We said uh, the, gland, the, gland start, the gland start at puberty. Before that, we have rudimentary branching ducts. At this time, we had, or we have, huh? Okay, go ahead. What did you say? We have example for that. The, if I tell you this uh, baby have nipple discharge, have bloody nipple discharge. From the effect of maternal hormones. Okay, from the effect of maternal hormones. So he, diagnosis for this. We had examples of in the lecture. Same. We said just, uh -huh. can you describe, can you describe what you have seen here? You have body marks here. Uh -huh. And the history, that they mentioned that the baby have lump in anterior chest bilaterally. So, just describe you what you have seen. Any volunteer? Who started the case? Who said this is the mother hormones? Uh, okay, Suhair. this is uh, yeah, okay, so here. Uh, so here? I recognize yeah. from your voice, okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead, so here. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Bilateral, uh, well-defined, uh, high voice, and uh, well-defined heterogeneous uh, mass, larger uh -huh. at the left breast, uh, uh -huh. with a small anechoic, uh, small anechoic structures. Cystic changes, uh -huh. Ay, yeah, oval, yeah. bilateral, yeah. oval, mixed uh, uh, structures with cystic changes, variable cystic changes. So what are these cystic changes? and the patient having nipple discharge. What does it represent? In this age, without cystic changes, we call it what? If they have 
lump in their the side of their breast behind their nipple. Okay, we call it what at this age? We said? Neonatal gynecomastia. Neonatal gynecomastia. It's okay, neonatal. And when it's associated with cystic changes and having nipple discharge, we call it? What is the, the process? Is due to what? Yeah, what's happening within this uh, uh, breast belt? Represent what these cystic changes represent? Bactectasia. Okay. This is neonatal gynecomastia with the bactectasia, okay? Atrasound showing subareolar region heterogeneous multicystic mass with subareolar and uh, with, with representing a bactectasia, okay? Just to remind you, with tenor pubertal pre-staging, as we mentioned here, this is the pre-pubertal stage, no glandular tissue on ultrasound, and uh, no bulbable abnormality, only the nipple is up clinically, and on ultrasound, we have just no glandular tissue. The tissue, it will be hyperechoic, small hyperechoic, ill-defined area behind the nipples. Tenor two, it is bulbable breast butt, and this is usually corresponding to Thilark, having a breast butt, so bulbable, tender, usually. No gross uh, areolar elevations, okay? And this is, uh, as we mentioned, tenor stage two, breast development is the entity of Thilark. And on ultrasound, heterogeneous, a predominant hypochoic region is the predominant, heterogeneous area of hypo and small peripheral hyper. The hypochoic here is much predominant. Stage three, the hyperechoic, peripheral hyperechoic start to increase. While the same time, the central uh, hyper, hypochoic is also increased, extending beyond the areolar region, but still like a, a mass-like or nodular-like. And at these times, there is elevations of the breast, the entire breast, without separations, without separation of the areola. And uh, increasing, okay, when it's getting diffuse, this hyperechogenicity getting diffuse, huh? while, but still the central hypoechoic region it persists, this is tenor four, okay? lacking the nodular pattern of tenor two and three, but becoming more diffuse and increasing the echogenic uh, parenchyma, but the central hypochoic is still resistantly seen. This is four, and at this level corresponding to the secondary mount of the, of the uh, areola. Both are elevating, causing a secondary mount, and this is usually seen uh, at 13 to 14 years, and let no, uh, not comfy, uh, we, we haven't much asymmetry, okay, in the press. And, uh, and stage three usually, stage three or stage four, corresponding to the, okay? And usually at about uh, 12 and a half year old. And stage five, Usually, as we mentioned clinically, based on recessions of the areola and the contour become as a whole smooth and the whole breast having one contour, which is the adult type of, of, of the breast. And also the asymmetry is less noticeable. Uh, usually it's take two or three where there is more much asymmetry. When we get to stage four and five, the asymmetry getting less, okay? And on ultrasound, as we mentioned, it's almost this central hypochoic region, it's disappear and intermix smaller, smaller hypochoic with diffuse hyper echogenic uh, parenchyma, as well as the development of the subcutaneous fatty layer. So, in conclusions, we have to understand the development Okay, of the breast and physiology, so as we could recognize what is abnormal.
differentiate it from the normal. And just to remember, to remember or to remind you, the breast is equally in girl and boy arise from the uh, milk line in triuterine at uh, about four to six weeks and which is a modified epocrine sweat gland. It is about the skin. It is the skin. From the ectodermal part of the skin, the parenchymase arise. From the endodermal part, uh, or from the dermal, sorry, from the dermal part of the skin, uh, the mesenchyme of the breast is arise, or the connective tissue and fat is arise from the deepest part, okay? And there is no gender difference up to pubertal times, where the suppressions of the uh, uh, estrogen by testosterone prevent further development of the breast, while uh, in the female, the female hormones, the surge of estrogens along with other factors uh, account for the breast development. And as we mentioned, um, the understanding of this is, is still to know the congenital and developmental anomalies. See? And uh, appreciating the relationship between the epithelium to the mesenchyme, this will lead to understanding the development and abnormality and the factor affecting the disease process. Okay. As we mentioned, the human breast is a distinctive, having a distinctive development with extensive remodeling under the influence of the hormones. And it is a dynamic structure significantly affected by the hormones during the ministerial cycles and this will be dramatically, uh, dramatically more uh, influenced during pregnancy and lactation with a lot of changes and the structural changes that visible, uh, bulb bubble, and these can result in fear from malignancy. We have to be aware about these changes and the extensive hormonal stimulation significantly increase the volume of the breast during pregnancy and lactations with maximum increase in the gland full maturations uh, in expense of the stroma and the amount of the gland decreases with age and replaced by fat during menopause and as you know it can get reversed by the use of hormonal replacement therapy and thank you for attention.